As students head back to school, many are struggling with learning loss and finding themselves behind after a year of online classes. Yeah, some kids are also struggling with social skills. In today's Mental Health Monday, we take a look at how games could help kids catch up. Joining. Are we ready? Go to the right. The game is called Minefield. The goal? get from one side of the field to the other without okay. stepping on any so-called mines. These mines, toys, shoes, or other objects sprinkled along the journey. The key to success? Take another big step. The ability to communicate with your teammates. It's a communication exercise where this person who's blindfolded is relying on this verbal input to tell them how to go. Marcy Gilbert is an educational therapist with a nonprofit called Calibrate. She also has a private practice where she works with kids who have a variety of learning disabilities. A common thread among her clients, social isolation caused by difficulty being understood by peers. In a game like Minefield, two things are going on. It requires trust. And it addresses another pervasive problem. Kids have a scarcity of safe spaces. Spaces with no clicks, where what you look like doesn't matter, where you can say the wrong thing and not be destroyed. For kids struggling academically or socially. It takes a safe space to decrease stress on the brain so that kids can build their critical thinking skills. One minute and go. This game is a variation on Pictionary. Students are paired with a partner and draw a picture. In round one, the first person draws whatever they like. In round two, that student must describe to his or her partner how to draw the very same thing. Draw a line and then draw half a circle. As the allotted 60 seconds draws to a close. Three, two, one, and show. <laughs> Students see for themselves how well they communicated and how well they listened. It's a flower! <laughs> this is forcing them to have to communicate verbally what it is that they're seeing in a way that is productive. Whether it's a drawing game or a walk through the minefield. Both exercises require kids to use expressive skills and to collaborate. While these games may appear to be frivolous, Marcy says at a stressful time like this, they've never been more important. Kids learn better when they're lighter. And laughter, I would say, is probably the most lightning thing that we have. <laughs> awesome. Joining us now, <laughs> educational therapist Marcy Gilbert, who you just saw in that story. Marcy, thanks for joining us. You know, for years, yes. you've been using games to help students with learning yeah. disabilities. Yes, that was awesome. Yeah, it was that so was awesome. fascinating <laughs> and so interesting to watch. Sure. <laughs> I'm sure that's the first time you've seen it, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, She's my still job like, is done. Thanks, you all. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> We're not done, Marcy. No. no. Come back. Come back. <laughs> well, we want to ask you, Marcy. Shout out to those kids. They uh, yeah. Uh, they go to a nonprofit called Partnership for mm. Success, and they're just amazing. Oh, so they seem like it. Yeah, they seem like it. And you are wow. very amazing, yes. also. Yes, Marcy, we Thank were just you. saying uh, we're talking about those games. Mm -hmm. How do those games help all children improve? Mm. It takes pressure off of them. Yeah. Yeah. They're having an opportunity <laughs> to socialize without the pressure of having to figure out how to initiate it, what to say. Mm. They're working on a common goal. Um, the, even though they're having to verbally express, we've taken away the things that stress out the brain. Yeah. Like they don't have to remember anything. They've got tons of visual cues. And then again, they have that collaboration. Um, it, there's a reason why kids have a natural inclination to turn anything into a game. And it's because their brains are wired for that. That's how they learn. Games create a safe space to take risks and make mistakes, mm -hmm. to learn how to do strategy and problem solving, to persist, to be patient. Mm -hmm. And all of these things are so important for all kids and especially kids that have learning needs. Well, Marcy, obviously we're very early into the school year, but a lot of teachers are already reporting that they're seeing significant learning loss. Now, you said laughter is a tool to help students get back on track. How does that all work? Okay, well, without getting too academic, <laughs> when, when we get stressed out, our brain produces a chemical called cortisol, and cortisol is a real drag. It, it, it gets all messy in the brain, and things that we need for learning, like memory, uh, don't function properly. Mm -hmm. So when we play games, we're, rele we're releasing what's called the happy hormones, serotonin and dopamine. Those things reduce the negative chemicals in the brain and then reaccess the brain to be able to learn. 
huh. um, and to be able to be engaged. All right. Marcy, finally, we want to ask you, what can parents or caregivers do at home mm. if they see their kids struggling academically or socially? Fun fact, um, persistence is more a determinant in success than IQ. Mm -hmm. So how do we teach kids to be persistent? We can play games, uh, play cards, Pictionary, Clue, Django, anything that involves strategy and show them play open handed so they can see how you're making choices and what you would do if you were in their shoes. Um, build something together, mm -hmm. build a model, something that requires hammer and nails, old fashioned arts and crafts, mm -hmm. cook something together, uh, put together a jigsaw puzzle, get them moving their bodies, play catch, kick a ball. Any of these things are going to raise dopamine and serotonin yeah. levels and they're going to create awesome opportunities for kids to socialize in a way that's fun and safe and to be able to see results with yeah. products and things that they make. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much for all your guidance and tips yeah. for parents out there. You're a ray of sunshine. Yeah, you really are. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank once you so again. Good afternoon. Yes, once again, therapist Marcy Gilbert, thank you so much.